as well as during employment plans during employment kind of compensation which is more linked with uh, share based uh, payments like uh, 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 stock options or outright share grants or anything of those kind so two things there how do you uh, handle them in the financial statements as well as how do we get into the valuation processes uh, of uh, each of those kind of payments that is what we are going to deal in this session so first looking at the post employment plans which are typically categorized as the pension plans and in that category we can very well look at two types of plans one is a defined contribution plan and the other one is a defined benefit plan so when i am talking about a defined contribution plan here the company is take is not taking care of the pension of the employee the pension benefit of the employee rather on the other side it is contributing a constant proportion of the salary or constant amount or a defined amount need not be constant proportion of a salary probably a constant amount or a constant proportion of the salary every year or every month to the retirement account of the employee so every for every month of service he is uh, putting up with the company some portion is contributed uh, as a pension retirement account retirement account of the employee so depending on the number of years uh, or number of months of service he has put up with the company the contribution keeps growing and growing but once this pool is formed and the person retires there is the company is not taking the responsibility of distributing this much this is depend this this how do you manage this in what proportion you want to invest where this is not taken care by the company its responsibility is only to contribute some portion of the salary every year to that account it is not managing the account it's up to the individual or the employee to bear the risks that are inherent in that particular account and this particular account will take care of distrib dis distribution of the benefit uh, once the employee retires until the death will be taken care by his retirement account which is not taken care of by the employee so the employer is only doing a contribution to this but he is not getting into defining how much benefit would this employee get on the retirement where so which means the employee will bear the investment risk for it and we are not defining any specific benefit which the employee will get on the retirement until his death where uh, and so from uh, an accounting standpoint one it is very easy to account because from an employer's perspective he is contributing some amount to some account that's it Th that's where his responsibility ends only contributing something to an account so whatever he is contributing on a monthly basis that is treated as a pension expense and it is directly put in the income statement and uh, there is nothing uh, that is going into the balance uh, sheet as a part of this model so it's a very simple accounting process as far as the defined contribution plan goes but when we are talking of a defined benefit plan it's not the contribution that is talked of it's not how much employee is contributing to an account that is talked of here the employee is employer is defining the benefit part you will be paid this much amount every month on your retirement this will this is the amount that you will be paid every month or every year on your retirement until your death so it's not 
the amount that i am contributing it's the benefit how much you will get on your retirement so that is why we call it as a defined benefit plan and generally the defined benefit plans are based on the years of experience okay if you have put two years if you have two years of experience with the company probably 2% of your salary before retirement it will be worded like this 2% of the final salary which is salary before retirement for every year of service so because you have put 2 years of service the pension which you would be receiving is 4% of your final salary before the retirement whatever is your final annual salary before retirement 4% of that will come out as a pension for you every year until your death that is what is typically worked out as a part of the defined benefit pension plan so whatever he is contributing so it's the output which the employer is bothered so he is not uh, there is no bothering about how much he has to contribute where to invest all these will go as the headaches of the employer all he is responsible for is pay this much of pension every year until this employee is alive so because of that the investment risk is primarily borne by the employer in this case so whatever the contributions he is making that contribution need not be a specific percentage every year but whatever the contribution he is making he generally makes it, he creates a trust and he makes the contribution to the trust and this trust is responsible for investing this funds, generating the returns, interest, principal, generation so that the objective is to meet this much of pension for each of the employees as long as they are alive. So as and when the, the pensions from due you are creating yourself in such a position that you can pay all those uh, amounts based on whatever you have contributed and based on uh, whatever the returns those uh, investments are generating using those things you are able to pay the benefits to the employee as they fall due that is what goes as a part of a defined benefit plan so because of this how do you evaluate the future benefits how do you uh, find out how much has to uh, go as a part of the pension obligation from a company how much uh, you have to contribute every year how much return you expect out of the contribution so there are so many other aspects that go when the company itself is managing a pension plan it has to even take into a uh, consideration the actuarial assumptions what is the mortality rate in the country how long what is the life expectancy of the person uh, in a uh, of this kind of a person so a lot of things uh, have to be taken into uh, account while deciding how much has to be contributed towards the pension if, if at all the the intention is to give this much of pension on the retirement of the person so that's where uh, we'll try to take up uh, an example to study the entire uh, plan and uh, in that we can even uh, see what are the assumptions that are going into it so then we can uh, get a better uh, view or better understanding of the pension uh, benefit uh, plan defined benefit pension plan right so with that we take up an uh, example and start uh, getting further so whenever we look at any defined benefit pension plan few things we would uh, look at is from the company's uh, standpoint because they have to pay the pension benefits so they have to assess the value of the future obligations how much should how much uh, will be will have to be contributed today so that we can pay this much of pension to this person from his retirement date to his death 
so what are the things that are coming up okay the salary levels here how much his salary can become at this point once his salary is this much how much proportion how much percentage 1.5 percent or 2 percent of the salary of this per every year of service so how many years i expect him to work and based on that i compute the amount that has to be accumulated at this time be and also what is the typical life expectancy of uh, the people so from here from the date he is going to receive the pension how long he is going to be uh, alive on an average how what is the expected life of the person so based on that if at all this much of pension need to be paid every year how much should be the amount that should be available as on this date if this much is available as on the date of his retirement how much should be contributed from now onwards every month or every year and for that i need to know what is going to be the interest rate during each of these periods and at the same time what is going to be the interest rate during each of these periods so at least one expected interest rate during each of these periods should be known so those are the workouts which have to be done in case the company itself is going to handle the employee benefit of the person so it is based on in what uh, proportion are the salary levels growing to, uh, planning to grow uh, until the retirement layer what would be the typical retirement age and uh, what are the mortality levels at this moment and even the pattern of the interest rates all these things will help me to understand how much should be contributed or what is the obligation of this employee of each of the employee today for the company so that based on that they can start contributing something to the fund under the assumption that uh, this fund would regenerate this much of uh, return so that uh, the pension obligation of the employee can be paid once the retirement occurs <coughs> so in a in a regular basis when it comes to working out on the balance sheet the companies typically don't show the obligation separately and their investment separately their contribution and uh, investment uh, to that uh, uh, assets they don't show them separately they show the net of that what is the value of investment they have done till date minus what is the obligation of the company from the perspective of this pensions so the difference between the two is what is being called as pension funded status and that funded status if that comes out to be positive means they must have contributed more or uh, the those particular uh, assets are uh, earning more and more return than expected then we see that the funded status will be positive means it will be shown into the assets of the uh, balance sheet if it is negative it will be shown under the liabilities part so on the other way we are talking about is positive means overfunded we have funded uh, more than the obligation underfunded means we have funded less than the obligation so that particular portion how do we compute and how do we uh, find out what are the various uh, charges or costs that are involved in it we'll try to uh, do the entire thing with the basis of an example so that things become more and more clear for us okay let's look at this example okay when we are uh, talking about uh, this uh, defined benefit pension plan <coughs> we are talking about the present value of all the future benefits based on the growth in the salary levels in future but of course here i use the word actuarial present value why am i saying actuarial present value because there is some amount of mortality all these people whosoever are working today they may not be alive until the 
retirement period and at the same time they may not be uh, in a position to take the pension they might have contributed for a few years but after that they die so actuarial is coming into picture by taking into accounting the mortality rates and uh, the per